Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, at the end of this month, I will have served in this august body for 15 years. Besides the 15 years of service here, I also served honorably for four years of active duty in the United States Army, Mr. Speaker. In recognition of Veterans Day this past Monday, I'd like to thank all of my fellow veterans for their honorable service, Mr. Speaker. Today is the first time I've requested to use personal privilege to respond to an attack on my character and reputation, even though throughout my service, liberals in both parties have targeted me with libelous and slanderous attacks. On October 21st, I sent a co-sponsor memo to members of this chamber to request support for a resolution of impeachment. My request is a legislative action. My request is based on the constitutional authority granted to this legislative body. My request is in support of the Speaker. rule of law. Mr. Well, Speaker, on October 23rd, the will, the, consent, the Mr. Speaker, will, the gentleman, will the gentleman suspend? For what purpose the gentleman, Mr. Dermody, rise? A parliamentary inquiry, I think, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman may state his parliamentary inquiry. The gentleman speaking on unanimous consent. No, uh, the gentleman is, has requested to be recognized under a point of personal privilege, which if you look at what that deals with, it, it deals with when someone feels that their uh, character or you know, their own personal uh, reputation has been hindered or harmed by someone and they are afforded that opportunity under the rules, although it's seldom used, I admit. I would uh, then object to using that uh, procedure because there's, I don't believe any of the attorney generals in any way talked about or discussed the reputation of the gentleman. And I think it's an if inappropriate you, forum right now to be having this discussion about impeachment. I think um, the, the gentleman, Mr. Metcalf, had indicated to me, because this is a rather uh, seldom used procedure, and it is clearly in our rules and in, in the, uh, the Mason's manual, uh, he had given me a uh, idea of where he's going with this, and it was in my judgment that um, he was entitled to a point of personal privilege on this subject. Well, if it's a defensive character, the gentleman should defend his character, but not 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 legislation. I, I think he. I think if you'll allow him to continue, you'll see where is where he's going. I Mr. obviously Met object to his continuing. I think it's a mistake, and I'm not interested in him continuing. I think it's wrong on this floor of this house to be discussing this matter right now. Appreciate the gentleman's objection. The gentleman, Mr. Metcalf, may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And if the members will bear with me, the comments overall would have taken two and a half minutes, uh, but of course this has prolonged it. Mr. Speaker, on October 23rd, the minority leader from the 43rd Senatorial District in Allegheny County utilized his time under petitions and remonstrances to parrot the talking points of the Attorney General's response to my call for her impeachment. He made accusations against me, Mr. Speaker, using the word bully over and over and over again. The senator launched a blatant personal attack in response to the judicious choice I made to propose we exercise our legislative duty as provided for in the Pennsylvania Constitution. Frankly, Mr. Speaker, his conduct was truly unbecoming of a member of this esteemed legislative body. Mr. Speaker, a bully is someone who uses a position of strength or power to impose his or her will on someone of a weaker status in an unjust manner. The speaker. The bully preys on someone who is speaker, weaker with the intent to commit an injustice. Suspend. Speaker. A bully is what, not it, someone. Will the who, gentleman the, suspend? The, will the gentleman, Mr. Beckett, please say. The, the gentleman, Mr. Dermy, have a further parliamentary inquiry? Yes, Mr. Speaker. May state it. Mr. Speaker, I believe that the gentleman is using personal privilege to attack another person's right. character instead of defending his own. If he's going to defend his own, yeah. fine. Yeah. Gentlemen. Yeah, and the, that, that's and not believe, a, I that's believe not six a parliamentary months ago. inquiry. You're, the okay. gentleman's recognized for a parliamentary inquiry. I don't believe that was a parliamentary inquiry. That was a observation of yours. Well, I, I, I would ask the speaker that he 
ask the gentleman to follow the rule. And in addition, I believe it was like six months ago that the speaker ruled in a, in, in a similar instance with one of our members that those discussions had to be made on the House floor. Those remarks had to be made on the House floor. I believe that with the Representative Sims of Philadelphia. I believe that involved uh, unanimous consent. It was personal privilege. I appreciate your, your comments. I, as I mentioned, the gentleman gave me an indication of where he was going with this, and it was in my judgment that it, that it fell in under the rules of personal privilege. I, I guess, is, that, is it not a parliamentary inquiry when you're discussing the rule itself and how the, the, the rule doesn't provide for disparaging another's character. He's supposed to be defending his own. That's what the rule absolutely is, is, discusses. In the judgment of the, of the speaker, certainly the gentleman is defining why he thought he was disparaged. Gentleman, Mr. Metcalf may proceed. Gentlemen, uh, Suspend a minute. The gentleman from Lancaster County, state your parliamentary inquiry. Mr. Speaker, the uh, question I have is, um, if someone feels disparaged, does it have to be that they feel disparaged by another member of the House or on, that they were disparaged on the floor of the House? Or if they feel that they were disparaged by anyone, are they allowed to then use point of personal privilege? Because when I get into a campaign, there's times I often think my opponent disparages me. Am I allowed to stand on the floor of the House with point of personal privilege? and? refute what my opponent said about me? Or does it only apply to members on the floor of the House? Mason's Manual, Section 222, Questions of Personal Privilege. Questions affecting the rights, reputation, and conduct of members of the body in their representative capacity are questions of personal privilege. Number two, questions of person of privilege of members must relate to members uh, to excuse me, let me start over. Questions of privilege of members must relate to persons as members of the body or relate to charges against their character that would, if true, incapacitate them for membership. They are not entitled to the floor on a question of personal privilege unless the subject that they propose to present relates to them in their representative capacity. Number three, persons raising questions of personal privilege must confine themselves to the remarks that concern them personally. When speaking under personal privilege, members have no right to defend any persons other than themselves. I would say that, that under the most broadest interpretation, it could go to any uh, person in the universe that might disparage one. I think the intent is more to be confined to those of us you know, in this building that working directly in your capacity as a, as a state representative. Do you have a further parliamentary inquiry? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentlemen, Mr. Metcalf may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as I said, Mr. Speaker, at the beginning, after being here for 15 years at the end of this month, I've never asked to use this personal privilege before, and I thought uh, very appropriate to respond to one of our colleagues in the Senate that was making the attack, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I was saying, the bully preys on someone who is weaker with the intent to commit an injustice. A bully is not someone who proposes to use constitutional authority to rein in the misbehavior of someone elected to a statewide office. A bully is not someone who encourages this body to stand up for the rule of law. There's a book entitled Bullies, How the Left's Culture of Fear and Intimidation Silences America, written by Ben Shapiro. He makes the case that the left uses the word bully to actually bully their opposition into silence, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, liberals also, use, also misuse many other words such as bigot, homophobe, xenophobe, all in an attempt to create fear and intimidation amongst their opposition. The fear of the damage that labels can have is used in an attempt by the left to bully we the people into acceptance of their liberal agenda, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will not be silenced 
I will stand up for the rule of law, I will stand up for the Constitution, and I will fight for justice. And I encourage my colleagues here and fellow citizens to stand with me. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.